Now, to a story that we are putting a specific emphasis on this morning, a senior United Nations official says the extent to which violence is embedded in society means that uprooting it is everyone's job. Fumzile Mlambo Shuka, executive director of UN Women, spoke as the world begins 16 days of activism against gender-based violence today. She lamented that violence against women and girls continues to be a low priority on the international development agenda and urging more action and more funding to end the pandemic once and for all. The International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women begins on the 25th of November and ends on the 10th of December on Human Rights Day. In some countries, as many as 70% of women report having experienced physical or sexual violence from an intimate partner. Other instances, intimate partner violence accounts for between 40 and 70% of female murder victims. All right, and that story this morning forms at the basis of our Twitter poll, and we are asking you, what do you think is the greatest contributor to gender-based violence? What do you think is the greatest contributor to gender-based violence? Is it culture? Is it ignorance or is it incompatibility? Uh, you can tell us another option if you just don't know what another contributor to gender-based violence is. That is our Twitter poll question this morning. Do interact with us uh, on our Twitter poll this morning, our Twitter page at KTN News. You can also tweet me directly at Michelle and Gende. Give us your thoughts and comments as well on our hashtag uh, worldview this morning. And I uh, would like to move on with our conversation and uh, speak uh, to one of our guests this morning. And we are keeping our focus on gender-based violence. Today marks the beginning of 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. And in studio, we have a very young 24-year-old gender activist. And I will let her introduce herself. Thank you very much for joining us in studio this morning. Thank you, Tim. Uh -huh. My name is Rachel Makali, uh -huh. born and raised in Nazare. I'm a grassroots gender activist and also a proud African thing. Right, right. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Now, mm. your story is one of inspiration as well. You have been a victim of gender-based violence. You bear not just emotional and physical scars, but you've triumphed through that uh, to be able to champion now for the rights of women. But talk to us about your story all the way from Madari slums. How were you able to get through those circumstances? Um, initially, being born in Madari, you understand um, the environment is more patriarchal. Mm -hmm. And then um, also you expose so many risks. So I got involved to an early relationship mm -hmm. at around 13 years. You know, when you are young, you know this, lacking also like uh, being born and raised, I've uh, been raised by my grandma, sorry. And um, the only person you see when you, a guy approaches you, you're like, this can be the person who promised me love. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you're looking to him as a fatherly figure. So at first, it wasn't that bad. It was a bit late, it wasn't that bad. But with time, when I started also some cautioning, like um, when you started like putting restriction, like you're not supposed to speak with the guys in the community, you're not supposed also to stay away sometimes mm -hmm. with other people. Mm -hmm. It's when also it started becoming violent. And um, looking in terms, when most of the time, the culture we have in our, in our community and also African setup, mm -hmm. When a guy speaks, it's, it's all about why you're not supposed to question. Right. So I used to feel very bad. So it ended up being violent until I finished my high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was in high school? Uh, I was 13, still in primary. You met the man when you were 13 years yeah, old? Yeah, when I was 13 years. Uh -huh. And yeah. how, do, how, how did you manage to get out of those restrictions? Uh, it wasn't that easy. Uh, I'll say like also, I'll thank the community women leaders. Mm -hmm. They're very supportive. And then uh, during that time is when I was getting also involved with community, community forums, community organizing through a group called the Pioneer Youth Working Group. Uh -huh. Is when um, 
I started realizing uh, these things that are going through me, they are not good. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I need to speak about it. So with the time also, depending on also how the community views you, you ended up being violated, but you keep quiet. Mm -hmm. And then you ended up also being violated when you go to report to the police station. They tell you those are love issues. So go and sort it aside. Right, right. You don't need to come and tell us. Mm -hmm. And then also it became a norm in the community when I start also raising it up. People are like, yeah, you need true love. So where's to Right, yeah. right. Uh, now, that being said then, would you say that the problem is with us and the society itself because like you mentioned you were silent because you yeah. were afraid yeah. of what people would think and the stigma you were yeah. 13 years yeah. old here you are living with a man and then when you did bring it out at the same time society still you know pushed yeah. it back mm -hmm. sort of just sweeping it under the carpet yeah. so you are now the organizer of the coalition for grassroots human rights defenders that mm -hmm. has done several things uh, mm -hmm. you know with regard to gender-based violence talk to mm -hmm. us about some of the initiatives that you've carried out um, some of the initiative because uh, despite being the convener of coalition for grassroots human rights defender mm -hmm. I'm also a convener of a social movement called Pan-Africa Grassroots Human Liberation. Right. So yeah, by through my own experience, my own story, I'm able also to incite other women positively to start speaking against gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. Whereby we've been organizing community forums where we talk like these are not, this is against the law, women rights are human rights. Mm -hmm. And also through also speaking out as a person without looking. Because people tend to think if you become this, this big title, you can't speak about violence. Right. So through me also speaking, it has led other women to start speaking out. Mm -hmm. And also through, like, in the Coalition for Grass, which Mary Defender, we have other female activists, mm -hmm. women rights defenders, who also, they, there's too much expectation in the community whereby people tend to believe when you defend other people, as we can't be violated, but also as sometimes we are violated. Mm -hmm. So the moment, like, through the initiatives, when also women rights defenders also speak out what they are going through. Right. But and also, like, uh, going back to the question, I, I did not used to live with him. But you were like, I go sometimes for sleepover, mm -hmm, I come back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you understand the life in Ghetto the way it is. Right. And then also, it was very supportive economically. Mm -hmm, and that's so what attracted Because of poverty, is what also attracted that. me. Like, yeah. you're like, where do you need to go? You, you are in school, sometimes you need sanitary towels. You don't have somebody to buy for you. Mm -hmm. So you're like, this then, despite everything, you, you know, you are young, you don't even differentiate what is love and what is not love. Mm -hmm. So you're like, at the end of the day, there's love and also. Mm -hmm. There's also some benefits you are getting, right. but because of economically and independent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when we speak of gender-based violence, most of the time we forget to involve the men, because this yeah. is not just about women. Yeah. Uh, in fact, a new report uh, by the National Health Survey actually shows that uh, was it 40 percent of men actually mm -hmm. between the age of 15 and 49 have reported uh, going through physical or sexual abuse yeah. as well yeah. and uh, even when it comes to abuse against women many times it's perpetrated by the men yeah. so how as a gender-based i mean as a gender activist have you managed to spread this awareness out to the men for example a man over the age of 18 should know yeah. that a girl under the age of 18 mm. should not be in any sexual relationship yeah like, like what you do sometimes, you do a bit of gender engagement mm -hmm. in the community level, whereby we do in a grassroots setup. We can have a group of guys and us women, and then we start debating what are the causes of these gender issues mm -hmm. and what can we do about it. But we tend to believe sometimes uh, our society is a society whereby it has reason men to be tough, right. to be evil, not to be told anything about, um, not to be questioned. Mm -hmm. And then looking on the way women and us, we have been raised with the African setups. We have been raised in such a way we are not supposed to question men. There are certain ways we are supposed to sit like, mm -hmm. and not also, if a man says everything, you're not supposed to say no. Mm -hmm. So when we engage them in terms of gender issue, we surely try to make them understand what we go through. Because also there are also men who go through violence, mm -hmm. but they can't speak about. Because the same, the same thing also the society tells them, you think a man you're not strong. supposed to speak out. You're supposed to be strong, you're supposed to be tough. Mm -hmm. If you, you cry, it's a sign you're weak. Mm -hmm. So it's also, it's like a, a dilemma. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I believe, even in, in Madari, the way we are coming from, violence is cut across, both to men, to kids, and also, the, even the state sometimes perpetrates violence. Right. Looking in terms of extrajudicial killing, mm -hmm. that is also violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how deep-rooted is it? Because you mentioned earlier, it, Kenya is a very patriarchal society. So speaking to the men, are they willing you know, to accept issues of gender equality, giving mm. women equal rights? Mm. How deep-rooted is it? Um, it's very deep-rooted. Mm. It's a process, and we need to work at it. Mm -hmm. 
both with the guys and uh, especially also with us as women, first we need to start liberating ourselves. Right. Because uh, look in terms of the private sphere, the way we have, the way our society is brought up. Mm -hmm. And most of us, like I'll give an example on the informal settlement where we come from, which is a low income area. When people come from the village, most of the power are given to men. Okay. Like uh, if it's, it's about like um, property inheritance, property rights, a woman she's not supposed to say anything. Mm -hmm. So still people they have in that, um, I say in Swahili, utasubi mm -hmm. whereby a woman she's not supposed to say anything, a woman she doesn't have the same right as you. Right. And then when you talk about gender issue, men tend to think or tend to believe it's a struggle of war between men and women, mm -hmm. of which it's not. Gender issue is not a struggle, we're not fighting. Mm -hmm. It's about understanding the opportunity we have, having mm -hmm. equal rights, both of us. And the moment me, myself, as a woman, I'm liberated and I'm, I'm, I'm empowered, it also helps my partner or my husband. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it also empowers the community at large. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. All right. Now, as we finish up, we asked uh, the public this morning what they think is the greatest contributor to gender-based violence. And we gave them a few options. Is it culture? Is it ignorance? Or is it incompatibility? Mm -hmm. you know, so according to you, what do you think is the greatest contributor? Uh, it's cut across. Um, First of all, I'll say it also respect. Mm -hmm. The moment uh, you don't respect a person with their own rights, their own dignity, dignity mm -hmm. is when also you tend to think you are beyond them. Right. And then the other thing is about when I look in terms of women economic empowerment. Most of women, um, sometimes I say, gender has been taken like a, a grave mm -hmm. of injustice. So you are told when you're married or in a relationship, you have to just all the time for the sake of kids, for right. the sake of marriage. Right. And then most of the women, because of lacking economic empowerment, are like, let me just all the time, mm -hmm. because I don't have anywhere to go. And still, like, in terms of looking, our legal framework is not very supportive. Right. Especially, the, the system is very corrupt. And I'll give an example of what has happened the day before yesterday mm -hmm. in uh, Shorimoyo. One of our sister, Winnie Obure, she rescued a girl who was defiled by a police officer. Mm -hmm. But the moment we went to the police station, even we were intimidated by the police officer. Right. Even right. The, and then looking back, like this is a perpetrator sitting in the same environment as the girl who has been defiled. No supportive measures. The police officer also, that they also arrested them and criminalized them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you see like- So the victim was criminalized. Criminalized. Mm -hmm. Also, and the defenders, the human defender, Winnie Obure and uh, Julie and the other right. six okay. women were criminalized mm -hmm. because of helping a girl. Mm -hmm. So you ask yourself, when we talk about uh, this domestic violence, right. it's, a, it's a national crisis. Mm -hmm. But how comes the judiciary is not supportive, the state is not supportive? Mm -hmm. When you talk, you're being looked as a victim. Right. And then right. the perpetrator goes free. Mm -hmm. So also you ask yourself, what's the role of DPP? And there are things that need to be taken into consideration. Into consideration. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much for speaking to us. Rachel McCulley, very young, 24-year-old grassroots activist. She's a convener of the Coalition for Grassroots Human Rights Defenders, as, of course, the country marks 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Rachel. Thank you, too. All right.